Davis. We're here with a Locals deck profile. We haven't seen this good in a while, so why don't you tell us what you were playing and what you did. Sure. So, as you all know, it's Nick. Um, I'm used to playing purple decks, but today we're playing a blue deck. So, we've been playing this for the past two weeks. It's been doing okay. Um, first tournament with it did real bad, but I was still learning. Um, second tournament, we snatched second place, and then this last one, we were able to snatch first place undefeated. So, um, if you like monster cards, look away. I don't want to scare you, but uh, you're not going to find them here. So, we're playing Runic Sky Striker. Oh, uh, no. Sky Striker, what? Ray's a Sky Striker monster. Hey, man, you don't need Ray, okay? Plausible deniability over here. We don't like Ray. We don't need her. Oh, no. All right, let's see this deck from All right, so starting out, we'll start with the Runic stuff. So, we're playing three tip. Obviously, search anything you need. Banish one from your opponent's deck. Um, I started using this to search fountain, courtesy of the man behind the camera teaching me that that works. Um, so, and you can special summon anything from your extra deck. Just generic, really, really good. You have to play it at three. Uh, freezing curses target any monster to negate it, any effect monster. Um, these are all just utility cards if you don't know what the runic cards do. So you're using freezing curses to negate effect monsters or, again, special summon from the extra deck. Your whole goal here is to just kind of slow the game down and out-resource your opponent so you'll see why, if you don't understand the theory, why this all works so well together. So you've got your generic searching for any runic cards and your effect negation. Then we are on three flashing fire, which is target a special summoned monster that your opponent controls and destroy it. And then I believe you banish three from this one, two. Freezing curses is three. Um, they all do the same thing on the secondary effect, special summon one from extra deck. So again, just trying to slow the game down. And three copies of destruction to destroy a spell or trap on the field and banish the top four of your opponent's deck. This one, a lot of people don't really play at three in certain builds, but again, you're trying to out-resource your opponent. It's it's good. There are just some times when I find myself siding out one to two copies of this. If I'm playing against tier, it's not that great, but it's, it's good in most cases. Um, it's really good against flu because you can just out there um, unexplored wins in the draw phase or anytime you can make them use it inopportunely in the main phase, so it's really nice. Um, one that a lot of people don't play is Slumber. We're playing Slumber because we're trying to play a resource game, and this is the one that you can use on your turn other than tip. Um, so essentially if you're going first, you're on turn zero, you can use any of your runic effects to summon a guy from the extra deck, and then once you've established Fountain, you can use this to make your Hugin unaffected, or sorry, not unaffected, can't be destroyed by battle or card effect once that turn doesn't matter if they're not going to, you just get to banish a few cards off the top of your opponent's deck and trigger your fountain so that way you can draw more cards. It does come up a lot because you're trying to grind out your opponents with this deck, so slumber is very important. Um, one that basically nobody plays is Smiting Storm. Um, I like this card at two, it's just banish cards from your opponent's deck equal to the number of cards that they control. And um, this build is not my original build, this is not my... Um, creation. This was made by, I believe the man's name is Alessandro. He got top eight in an Italian tournament um, with this deck and I basically net decked it and made one small change. The small change was that I'm playing a second copy of Smiting Storm instead of a third copy of Triple Tactics and I'll get to that when I get to Triple Tactics. So Smiting Storm, very important. I like it at two. Um, the original build was only playing one, but I like it at two. I guess I may play it a little bit differently. And we're playing two fountain. Um, if your opponent knows what they're doing, they're going to try and out this as fast as possible. You have ways to get it back from the graveyard, but having a second one is always important because if you're going up against anything that will remove cards, you can get this banished and then you're really in a bad way. So mirror matches, um, any time that you would need this, it's just good to have two. Um, there was a match that I was playing against Live Twin Sprite and... Uh, and uh, I activated Tip on my first turn and banished his one copy of Fountain off of the top of the deck. So that was nice. Um, we won that game. Uh, for the people who don't know, can you explain why Fountain is like specifically like probably the most broken card of the of the whole like package? Yeah, sure. So Fountain says if you've activated a quick play Runic card um, on the next chain after, you can target up to three Runic quick play spells in your grave 
put them on the bottom of the deck and draw the same amount of cards. Sounds really good, right? Sounds even better if it's not once per turn, which it's not. So if you somehow manage to have this, have something to proc it so you can draw your three cards and then you have access to another one, you can just do it again. And uh, drawing three every turn, drawing six every turn cycle is really, really good. Um, especially when you're playing the Sky Striker cards because you will find yourself drawing a lot more than three multiple turns in a row. Um, I played a game last week where I, if I remember correctly, during my turn I drew nine cards or eleven cards. It was something like that. Um, it was really nuts. So, Fountain, extremely busted card. Should never have been printed, but since it's legal, we're going to abuse it while we can. It also turns all of your runic spells into hand traps. So it does, yes. That's wow. probably the other big, really that, big that is a little bit important. While it's on field, you can use your runic quick play spells um, from your hand. So, very important. And then that's all the runic stuff, so we're going on to the Sky Striker stuff. Probably the reason why this deck works is linkage. Um, so this is the newest card. You can send any other card on your field to the grave for cost. And if you do special summon a Sky Striker Ace Monster from your extra monster zone, or sorry, from your extra to the extra monster zone, it doesn't have to be a link one. You can summon Zeke with it. It's very, very good. Um, and then the second effect you don't really care about because you're never going to have a light and dark Sky Striker Ace Monster anywhere because we're not playing them. So um, a lot of times I'll find myself with a fountain on board and I'll use a runic card to say destroy something or negate something on my opponent's field and then I can just use linkage send it for cost so that way one it gets you something else in grave it's for the rest of your sky striker cards and also it's just a free resource you don't need to have um, other things on field to be sending cards that would otherwise be static so you can just send cards that you're already using in the same chain and it's incredibly strong it's incredibly potent this card is ridiculous next up we have three copies of Widow Anchor. Everybody knows this card. Target a face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effects, and then if you have three or more spells in Grave at resolution, you can choose to take control of it, and that all lasts until the end of turn. Um, something that's important is that you can blank yourself with this if you have specifically Freezing Curses, because you cannot attempt to negate the effect of a monster whose effect is already negated. So if you Freezing Curse is a monster, you cannot then attempt to Widow Anchor it. Other way around works as well. So um, there was a time when I was playing against the same sprite player, uh, man behind the camera, on, on this last tournament. And um, I'm sure the video will be uploaded shortly after this or before, um, where I had... I believe I took one of my opponent's monsters. I took one of his monsters with Widow Anchor, and then he tried to Freezing Curses it, but he couldn't because it was already negated. So, um, just things to keep in mind. This card's really, really nuts. Very important, especially if you're going for like OTKs or board clearing strategies. Also very important, three copies of Shark Cannon. Target a monster in the grave, in your opponent's grave, banish it. Or if you have three spells in grave at the end of resolution, you can special summon it to your side of the field instead, but it cannot attack. So, obviously, goes without saying, very, very good against anything playing Tier Laments. Um, it's pretty good against anything playing Bestials because you can target whatever they're targeting for their summons. Um, I did have a time playing against Sprite again where we were essentially fighting over Red Resonator and I had a 2500 attack Kagari on board and I was able to beat him in time by 100 life points because he went Elf target Kagari and I was able to just chain the Shark Cannon so he couldn't gain any more life. Sorry, Elf target the Red Resonator. So, very good. There's a lot of weird things you can do with this. I think you have to play it at three. Uh, broken card. Engage. Search one, draw one. It's Pot of Greed, except you get to choose what you want half the time. So, very, very nuts. Uh, Konami, bring this back to three, please. No. Uh, also, really good card that a lot of people don't like, Afterburners. Target a face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field, destroy it, and then if you have three spells in Grave at the resolution, you can destroy a spell or trap on field as well. A lot of people don't know that and they don't go through the process of reading. They just think, okay, it's gonna destroy a card. And then they don't realize that they're also going to lose a back row. So something that you can do with these as well that should be mentioned, um, and I'll mention it here, is that if you have something like Afterburners, Engage, Shark Cannon, or Widow Anchor, and let's say, for example, you have two spells in Grave. So we'll say I have two spells in Grave and I activate Engage. I can then chain linkage, sending the engage to the graveyard, and then summon my Sky Striker Ace from the extra deck. And then when engage resolves, I then have three spells in grave, counting itself, 
so that way I get the additional effect of being able to draw a card. So that's another reason why linkage is very important, and that works the same way with all of these. If you have linkage, you can send whatever it is that you're activating to the grave and resolve the second effect, even if you didn't have three spells in grave at activation, it just matters what you have at resolution. So a little bit of knowledge for you if you didn't already know. And then Hornet Drones, summons a token, gets your engine online. You don't really care too much about it, but it is very important to have just because you're not playing Ray or Rose in the main deck. And multi-roll, this card is so, so, so ridiculous in this deck. If you don't know, once per turn during your turn, you can target one card on your field, send it to grave, and if you do, for the rest of the turn, your opponent cannot respond to the activation of any of your spell cards. Any of them. So every single card that you have that shares this green color essentially becomes a spell speed four for lack of better terms. And then, if that's not good enough, during the end phase, you can set Sky Striker spells from your graveyard to your field with different names from each other equal to the number of Sky Striker spells that you activated while this was face up on the field this turn. And then they get banished when they leave the field. So it just helps you get your resource loops going. It helps you grind out your opponent. Like this card does everything. It's really dumb. Like this card probably should have been banned a long time ago, but then Striker became bad. So um, hopefully it won't get taken away from us anytime soon. But you have to play it. Um, On to the non engine stuff, just generic stuff 3D Fissure. This card is really, really nuts. Don't yell at me about my rarities. I'm working on it. Um, this card is really nuts. It it makes Sprite have to think a little bit more. Is that three different rarities? Yes, it's a secret, a Dusa, and a common. It makes Sprite have to think a little bit more. Um, anything playing Bestials has a harder time playing around it. And, um, of course, it just hurts tears so much. So it slows them down drastically. So very, very good card. If you open it, usually you're gonna be in a good position. The only thing to remember is that linkage does send for cost. So if you have a runic monster in your extra monster zone and you have D Fissure on field, you will not be able to activate linkage sending that runic monster because it would go to banish instead of grave. Of course, as you all know, cost must be paid exactly as written. So very, very good card. I will not be cutting it. Two desires. Um, I firmly believe that I would be playing three of this if we could. This card is really good in this deck. Um, You're playing 40 spells. So the only time that it really matters is if you banish specifically engage or multi-roll or both of your fountains. I have found myself in situations where I banished engage and I still won. I banished multi-roll, I've still won. I banished both engage and multi-roll and still won. I have not found myself in a situation where I banished both fountains because obviously if you're using this and you have no access to your runic engine, you probably shouldn't be playing the deck, you should be eating crayons. So don't do that. Um, Triple Tactics at two. The original build was playing three, but I found that to be extremely bricky and it's already kind of bricky at two. Um, A lot of times you are gonna have that back and forth so you can use this, but remember it's only useful on your turn and a lot of your interaction is gonna be on your opponent's turn. I think that you should still be playing it simply because this card is just so insanely strong right now with being able to rip hands, draw two, or take from your opponent that it, it's, it warrants a spot even if it's not that great for what you're trying to do. I think it's still worth playing. And then of course the last card called by the grave because we don't like hand traps and we don't like Kelbeck and we don't like a lot of cards that are in the meta right now. So that's the deck, 40 spells. We'll go on to the extra deck. We are playing two Hugin. Um, Search is fountain from the deck. It protects your guy, your cards on the field and not just runic cards, it protects any cards on the field and it recycles itself whenever it goes to grave. Please remember that, I don't ever remember that and as a result I have been bestialed more times than I should have, a lot more times than I should have because this has just ended up in grave and nobody caught it. So. Please remember to shuffle that back whenever your uh, Hugin is destroyed by battle or card effect. Uh, next one, one moon in. This card is nuts, nobody plays it. Um, the most important thing to remember about this card is that during the end phase, gain a thousand life points, mandatory. Um, you're not playing any runic continuous spells, although I do want to tech in a singular copy of Allure, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But um, the most important thing is that it protects you from targeting effects, and it, um, gains you life. So 
you'll find that a lot of times when you're playing this deck, you're going into time, you're playing the long game, you're trying to out-resource your opponent, so this is a very, very good tool. And he's got 2,000 defense, so he's a little bulky. Uh, one Gary. If your fountain gets destroyed, you can summon Gary, add it back from grave. Also, when Gary is destroyed, um, or sorry, when he, yeah, when he's destroyed by battle, specifically, you can target any card on the field, destroy it. So he at least gets to pop something that destroys him, or if you want to take something else off the field, that's also very, very good. Um, and he can't be destroyed by card effects. That does come up sometimes, um, especially if you're playing against Runic, because if he can't be destroyed, then they can't resolve their second part of Flashing Fire. And then the next one is Freki. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else play this one, but he's very, very good. Um, when an attack is declared involving him, mandatory banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. When he's destroyed, I believe it's by battle or card effect. Yes. Target a runic quick play spell in your grave, add it to hand. Neither player takes battle damage in, from battles involving him. And then um, he's just generically good to have because he will get you into more interruptions. You can kind of put this on board and make your opponent choose between removing this and just letting you have it because it essentially doesn't really do a lot while it's on field. It just makes your opponent banish two from the top any times there's a battle with it. And then when it leaves the field, it gets you another runic quick play spell back in the rotation. So very good. Um, I wouldn't cut any of these. I have considered playing another copy of one of these. I'm not sure which one, but I would like to play more. Then onto the strikers, we're playing one Hayate, one Kaina, two Kagari, two Shizuku, and the one Zeke. So, the one Hayate, you don't really have a battle phase ever. You have to play very, very far ahead to have a battle phase. So, um, Hayate does come in handy sometimes, but it's very rare. Um, you're mainly just using it as a way to link climb. Kinda will save your ass sometimes. Play this card. If you don't play this card, you're missing out. It can stop your opponent from attacking with one monster until the end of their turn, and anytime you activate a Sky Striker spell on resolution, you gain 100 life. So it also helps you win in time. Very good card for this build specifically. Um, Kagari, of course, you're adding any Sky Striker spells back from your grave, and she gains 100 for each um, spell card in your grave, any of them. So very good. This is how you're recycling engage most of the time. You don't need three. You're not playing enough to justify it. And then uh, to Shizuku, during the end phase, add a Sky Striker card from deck with a different name from the one in your grave. So this is how you're mainly going to be finding your engages, your multi-rolls, and your afterburners, the one ofs, and your Hornet ones as well. So and then also while she's on field, all your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack per spell in your grave. So she's very very good as well. Um, I wouldn't play more. I would just keep playing too. And then Zeke. This card's honestly really good. Um, anytime you take anything from your opponent, if you have a Sky Striker monster on board, you can turn them into Zeke. Zeke will banish something from your opponent's field until the end of their turn. And also, if you need her to be bigger, you can target one card on your field. She'll gain a, a thousand attack permanently and then send that card to the grave. And then, of course, you can just use Zeke to link one into any Sky Striker ace from the extra deck. And then generics, we're playing one dark because everything right now is playing darks. You're playing darks in terms of um, Freki and Gary, so you can summon this a lot more often than you might expect. Um, it's really good to be able to link climb, and I'll show you why, because we're also playing one unicorn and one access code. Um, you find yourself with a lot of cards in hand sometimes, so I have found myself going from like dark in the unicorn and the access code and just being able to clear a board and like honestly sometimes sitting on a 5300 attack access code is not bad because you have so many cards to back it up so even if your access code gets removed it doesn't really matter all that much because you have so many other things going on um, I've had times where I'll have defissure up and I'll summon dark take something from my opponent um, in most cases it's like a bestial or something else that they can use and then link it off to get it banished and then into the unicorn and then get it banished with something else and then into access code. Access code can target anything anywhere from what it was summoned with. It doesn't have to be engraved, doesn't have to be in your grave, um, it can be banished, it can be in your opponent's grave, it doesn't matter. So. These cards are very important. I would keep it just like this. Also something to note with like the access code is that you have four pops right there. Correct. With the dark that you're going to banish. So you you have the capacity with along with your runic cards and access code on the board to get through quite a bit because you have you have 
your five pops here, you have your shuffle back here, and then, then you're left with a 53 body plus whatever you're doing with runic cards. And so you're able to pretty effectively just clear a board if your opponent gets into Right, and you're never summoning access code first turn because you don't need to. You're really trying to grind out the game, like I said before. So usually by the time you get access code on board, it's going to be very effective. All right, and then on to the side deck. Um, again, I did not make this deck. The side deck is exactly the same as I found it, so shouts out to, I believe his name is Alessandro, who built this deck. He's a smarter man than I. So, MVP of the side deck. We're playing three Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. Everybody who said this card is bad, I'm laughing at you. This card has won me so many games since I started playing this deck. Um, if your opponent activates anything that special summons and you're in game three or you're in time, you just chain this and you win. They cannot beat you. Um, you know, playing against Thunder Dragons recently, branded Thunder Dragons, you activate this when they activate branded fusion or anything, you're going to win the game. Um, playing against Sprite, same thing. If they if they do anything that's going to special summon before they get their red resonator online, you will always have more life points than them. So, very, very good card. Uh, three Lava Golem. This one I'm a little bit iffy on. It's very, very good. But my locals specifically recently, I have not been using this as much. It just hasn't been coming up. Um, really good against Sprite, really good against Tier. Um, but it also helps you win in time. Um, and you can lock it down with Kina. So there have been times where I've given it to my opponent and then I'll lock it down with Kina so it can't attack and they'll just take the damage and then they'll take the damage for another turn before they get a chance to attack with it or they have to remove it from the field on their own. So very good card. I don't know if I'm gonna cut any of it. I think it's very good. And then three Twin Twisters. This one's a little weird, but it's a spell. It puts another spell in your grave, and it destroys up to two cards from your opponent's field. Very, very good in any type of Runic Mirror match. Um, very good against Fluanderies. Very good against um, any type of Control deck, Labyrinth, Exosister. Um, it's not great against Tier, but there, there are times when you're going to want this, and I originally didn't like it in the build, but I've come to enjoy it. I think it's really good right now, in this build specifically. And then we're on three Judgment, because some people that you play against will always open up Evenly Mashed or Harpy's Feather Duster or some dumb shit, and you're going to need some way to defend yourself against it. This is the only one that does it. You can play Dark Bribe, but... At that point, you're going a little heavy, and I don't think it's really necessary. So, if you get hit with evenly and you don't have this, at least you can just keep your fountain and still have some of your runic cards in hand. So, there could be worse things happening. And then, one of the cards that has been a huge MVP, three copies of There Can Be Only One. This card slows the game down so effectively against everything right now. Tier has to play very weird to play around this. Sprite has to play very weird to play around this. Every bestial deck is limited to one bestial at a time because of that and so this it does slow you down because you can't go from a sky striker into another sky striker because they're all machines but the philosophy behind it is kind of the same with eldritch that it does slow you down but it slows your opponent down more and you can take more advantage of the slowed down game state so i think that it's very good i'm going to keep playing this at three uh, the only changes that I would make to the deck so far is I think that I want to put in a singular copy of Runic Allure in the main deck and try it out. Um, cards not once per turn, cards not once per chain, So, and it counts every quick play spell. So if you and your opponent go up to chain link 16 on quick play spells for some reason, then on the uh, next chain you will be able to proc Runic Allure 16 times and banish 16 cards from the top of your opponent's deck. Um, so very, very good. I'm going to try it out. I really, really like this deck. This is the deck that I've been having the most fun with recently. And um, I'm going to keep playing it for now, at least until Kashtira comes out. And then uh, we'll be on to something else, and hopefully we'll be doing even better. Awesome. Well, do you have any shout-outs or anything like that? Yeah, uh, shout-out the new, newly acquired sponsor slash team, Team Main Phase. You'll be hearing about them a lot here in the coming weeks and months. Um, we got some cool things happening on the background with our sponsor, so shout out to Geo for that. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more about us and them, and um, shout out to my testing circle, my friends, Jordan, Bert, everybody that I have the pleasure and displeasure sometimes of testing with. Uh, it really helps a lot. So, if anybody has anything, please go check out the deck profile for the man who made this list. He has some very, very in interesting insights and um, check out Main Phase on Facebook, 
and uh, we'll have the website link in the description. It's just n very new, just starting up, so there will be products getting put up on the website shortly, and keep an eye out because we've got some great stuff coming over there. Awesome. Thanks for the deck profile. Cool.